respected chairman, co-chairman, and uh, esteemed delegates. It's my pleasure to share with you our experience with the biomodulation of bone marrow for spinal cord regeneration. It's a rat model study. Traumatic spinal cord injury is a, a significant cause of morbidity and mortality even today. Thousands of young patients are affected all over the globe. In the present scenario, there is very little that we can offer in such situations to recover the loco lost locomotor function. The incidence of spinal cord injury, if you analyze, you find that it falls between 35 to 80 per million per population in most of the nations. And it's very interesting to note that we have as many as 20,000 spinal cord injury patients are added on every day, every year in India. And we have about 450,000 paralyzed patients in the U.S. as well. Apart from the miraculous cure of a paraplegic by uh, um, Lord Jesus Christ described in the Holy Bible, we don't have a real breakthrough in this, uh, uh, in this ailment. It is considered to be an ailment not to be treated for years. In this study, we have analyzed the regenerative effect of neurotransmitters by modulating the bone marrow. Uh, it was investigated in the spinal cord injury RAD model. This study was done in the Department of Orthopedics and also in the Biotechnology Department of Cochin University of Science and Technology. And uh, uh, we have used the Vista RADs, observing all the guidelines. 30 male Vista RADs in the animal lab of the neuroscience, Cochin University of Science and Technology was used as models. Under anesthesia, uh, hemisection of the spinal cord was done under uh, microscopic magnification uh, in 20 cases and transection in 10 cases. A specially designed rubber chamber was with a silastic tube was inserted subcutaneously with a tube at the site of injury site and uh, uh, it was fixed in with sutures for drug delivery. I'll show you all those uh, as we come down. Immediately after the surgery, monoplegia was observed in hemisection and uh, paraplegia was observed in transection and uh, 15 was used as uh, control and the other 15 was uh, um, grouped as the test group. In the control we have given uh, injection of bone marrow aspirate along with the physiological saline solution the chamber provided for about 21 days and the test group we have given the bone marrow along with uh, uh, neurotransmitters the 5 and GABA in physiological concentration for about 21 days. That is a spinal cord exposed under magnification. You can see the cord there. And uh, we have done a transection, which is again uh, arrowed there. And that is the uh, rubber container uh, into which we inject the um, uh, saline or the neurotransmitter combination every day. And the tip of this elastic tube is, is kept at the injury site. And uh, these rats were housed in different cages. And that's the hemisection with a monoplegia you observe immediately after surgery. Um, 20 days after the neurotransmitter and the marrow combination, you find the, uh, the it remains uh, uh, paralyzed, but still there is some sort of a dragging effect. 30 days, you find the right is moving still better, but uh, the limb is uh, still not fully recovered. And uh, the next slide will show you 40 days, the recovery is complete. And uh, when you do a uh, transection of the cord, you get a paraplegia. Both the low hind limbs are paralyzed. You find the right immediately after the surgery. And again, treatment. Uh, this is 30 days after neurotransmitter and bone marrow. It is very disinclined to move. It is uh, dragging, but you f still find a little bit of movement coming up. And uh, 40 days you find that again uh, uh, a little more recovery. The hind limbs are getting when you encourage the right to move, you find the hind limbs, they are moving. We have ensured that the cord was really cut. That is why a operative uh, procedure was done. So this right has recovered from a transection. And coming to uh, the chronic phase, uh, those cases in the control group which have not recovered after three months, again, we have done the same treatment. In this riot, you find that uh, after three months, there is no recovery for the monoplegia. Again, we have done the same procedure. And uh, that's not working. That you can see the, 
that video is not working, but uh, you can see the red moving, I will not waste time. And this was again after our visual uh, impression of a recovery. We have done the assessment of recovery using the reward seeking locomotor test, the microscopic examination, molecular studies on the neurotransmitter receptor kinetics, gene expression studies, confocal imaging and scanning electron microscopy. And you find the motor recovery was uh, assessed with the reward seeking locomotor test in which the rats were deprived of food for 24 hours continuously after which the rat was placed in a unidirectional pathway and the time taken at one me uh, to uh, from one meter distance to reach the source of food was taken as an indirect measurement of motor recovery. And you find that here the control group, it was averaged from 9 to 11 seconds to reach this uh, one meter distance. But in the spinal cord injured rat, you find the values are uh, very much high, it is about 45 seconds they are all taking. Uh, you have, uh, and uh, you find that uh, in the treatment group, the values are coming down to almost uh, reaching the control and uh, we have a graphic representation there where you find that uh, again uh, the value is coming down to reach the normal in the treated group whereas in the control group it remains the same. The histological studies where we have sacrificed the animal and uh, we have done a longitudinal section and the, uh, in the treatment group the, even the low power you find uh, almost a continuity there and the high power session you find that the, there is a neuronal continuity there in the site of injury. Whereas in the control group where no definite treatment protocol was given, you find that the, a little bit of uh, discontinuity in the whole uh, section, the low power view. In the high power view, you find a dense scar obstructing the site of uh, injury. And uh, again, um, the binding parameters of the GABA and the Five three was assessed using the sketch chart analysis, and again you find that there is a down regulation. This is the normal in the control. There is a down regulation in the spinal cord injured group, which is approaching the uh, the normal when you treat with the neurotransmitter in the bone marrow combination. That's a column representation where you find the down regulation, which is approaching the normal after treatment. And again, the uh, gene expression of uh, uh, 5HT1A receptor, the subgroup mRNA, you find the RQ values. Again, there is a uh, downfall in the spinal cord injured group, which is approaching the normal in the treatment group. Again, the same thing, the gene expression, um, the GABA A alpha 1 subgroup receptor mRNA, again, it was done, the RQ value. Again, you find that the uh, spinal cord injured group, it is uh, falling down, but uh, it's picked up in the treatment group to reach the um, control. Again, confocal imaging using the topo-3 um, uh, three staining was done in which you can see the cells, regenerating cells, which gives an index of uh, recovery or regeneration. I'll show you the picture. That's a normal where you find the, that's a nucleus which is stained. You can see a lot of nucleus there. That's a normal. That's the injury site where you find absolutely no evidence of any cells, any nuclei are not seen. And again, uh, the treated group, you find the nuclei appearing, thereby showing that there is a regeneration happening. And looking at the um, scanning electron microscopic image, you find the structural change at the site of injury, which is getting reversed with treatment. You can see the uh, structural change due to the shearing injury here. That's the electron microscopic picture. After treatment, you find it's almost approaching normal. And again, when you tag the bone marrow cells in the culture, uh, that's uh, what you see on your right is the green, is the bone marrow cells tagged with PKH2 GL. And uh, that is again treated with neurotransmitter combination. Again, the same combination, which again in culture later on, when you stain with nestin, the nestin takes, uh, it takes only the neural elements. You find it's turning red. That way showing that there's a conversion of the marrow elements to the neural elements. And uh, by way of conclusion, let me say that this uh, modulation of uh, neuro, uh, um, the marrow using the neurotransmitters opens up a new strategy for spinal cord injury treatment in future. Let me thank you for your patient listening.